As much as us retro gamers love our retro games compared to more modern releases, one of the exceptions we're willing to make is if they bring back a series we love with a long overdue sequel or remake, with, of course, our fingers crossed that it doesn't suck and sometimes with better luck than others. Now, it would be really easy to just say, how about every good retro game ever made? But I'm going to pick the five games that I would personally like to see the most, while also encouraging all of you watching to think of which games you would pick. Oh, and hopefully depending Depending when you're watching this video, some of the games on my list will no longer apply because the damn game finally came out. Okay, so first on the list we've got Star Fox. Some people say that there hasn't been a good one since Star Fox 64. Some people like other games in the series like Star Fox Assault, but what most people agree on is that Star Fox Zero release for the Wii U was very disappointing. One of Shigeru Miyamoto's rare misfires. Either way, regardless of how you feel about other games in the series, fans want to see a game that lives up to Star Fox 64. That game is loved by darn near everyone and it would be great to see another game that hits it out of the park in the same kind of way. I think one of the biggest things they'd have to get right is all the character and charm found in Star Fox 64. It could probably get away with being pretty cheesy, since that's why people love the older games so much. The way the different characters' heads bobble when they speak, imagine if real people spoke that way. Memorable quotes like, do a barrel roll, Falco acting totally ungrateful when you save him, and of course Slippy being an absolute jack wagon. Heck, I think they should even just double down on it and try to make him even more annoying. Well, perhaps in more subtle ways so that it doesn't take away from the game. I can't be the only person who would intentionally shoot him down, right? But besides all the quirks people have grown to love and remember so fondly, Star Fox 64 had a solid gameplay experience. The controls felt good, and the different maneuvers like boosting, braking, flips, and of course the barrel rolls always made you feel like you had the tools you needed to handle the situation. Finding different secrets and paths that would lead to alternative bosses and stages was so fun, and made the game highly replayable. Pretty much any of the dialogue in this game instantly takes me back to my childhood, and it would be great for a younger generation to have their own new Star Fox game to do that for them. And of course, the older farts like myself would play it too. Oh, and the other thing is that rail shooters have typically been a severely underrepresented genre, with the Panzer Dragoon series being one of the notable exceptions. So yeah, we need some more. Alright, next on my list we've got Earthbound, or the Mother series in general. I'll get to Mother 3 in just a moment. Earthbound is one of those games that is way more popular these days as a retro game than it was when it was brand new. Its fanbase has always been identified as a very dedicated cult fanbase, but I'd say its fanbase and brand awareness has become so widespread by this point that a sequel would generate a lot of buzz and be received with a boatload of fanfare. I think the biggest option obstacle facing this game, having a sequel, would honestly just be finding the right people to make the game and do it justice. They definitely need Shigesato Itoi working on it, being the writer and more of the first three games. However, he can be quoted as saying that another game in the series would be totally impossible, so that's kind of a problem and I doubt Nintendo would want to try to do it without him. Because Earthbound is such a unique game and has such a devoted fan base, it would be really easy to piss off fans if it didn't turn out a certain way. In fact, I'd be willing to bet the sheer prospect of making a sequel for Earthbound fans absolutely terrifies Nintendo. Still, it's hard to not think about how awesome of a game it could be if they pulled it off. Naturally, a lot of you are probably thinking, how about just localizing the sequel they already made, Mother 3, like fans have been begging for for years? Well, from the research I've done, it sounds like the biggest holdup is that there's subject matter from the Japanese version of the game that would either offend people if they don't change it, or piss off fans if they do change it. So we'll see if they ever come up with a solution for that, I guess. You want my advice? Get a reproduction cartridge for your Game Boy Advance and have at it. You can even find it with the English fan translation that people generally seem to like. Alright, next on the list we're looking at a Sega game and that would be Vector Man. When I went to make this video, this game immediately popped into my head for a few reasons. The first thing is that the atmosphere and aesthetic of this game is just so unique. This game really stuck out back in the day due to its visuals that pushed the hardware of the Genesis and with the 
great art direction combined with today's technology, the color palettes, lighting schemes, heck, just the look of Vector Man himself has a huge ceiling of potential. I think the biggest problem for this game is that its fanbase just isn't nearly large enough to warrant enough demand. As a result, Sega would essentially have to market it like they were introducing a brand new IP. But hey, the general concept is already there and is awesome, so one can always dream. The next game on my list is Super Mario RPG. Now, some of you might be quick to mention the Paper Mario series, but those games would eventually get away from their more traditional RPG roots as time went on, and I've kind of lost faith. And I specifically mention Super Mario RPG because it just feels a lot different. The biggest reason, of course, being that it was made by Square, back when I would argue they were in their prime cranking out tons of great games. Now, I don't know if modern day Square Enix could do the game justice with a sequel, but I look at a game like Octopath Traveler, originally released on a Nintendo console that looks beautiful with what some like to call HD 2D visuals, and it's hard to not think what could be. A nice looking Mario RPG that offers a unique take on the concept and gets back to its roots. Sign me up. Unfortunately, I don't think this will ever happen because it would essentially be like a middle finger to the Paper Mario series, and it would be against Nintendo's interests to do that. But still, in a world where Nintendo did a collaboration to make Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle, I'll always hold out hope. Alright, the last game on my list is by far the game I'd like to see the most. What makes it especially frustrating is that not only do I really want to see it happen, but the writing has been on the wall for it to happen a long time now. Banjo freaking Kazooie. I'm definitely not alone on this one, and I'd be happy with either a sequel or a remake. For those who don't know, when the original Crash Bandicoot trilogy of games was remastered, it sold like absolute gangbusters, and should have served as an immediate green light to remake Banjo Kazooie in the same way. Sure, it takes a lot of work to essentially rebuild these games from the ground up, but it's worth it. Early 3D games benefit the most from being remade due to their rough visuals. Yeah, you can get the Xbox 360 versions of the Banjo games on something like Rare Replay, but fans still want to see the game completely rebuilt. The game could look gorgeous and play like a dream. It just seems like such a no-brainer that Microsoft would have already done this. Xbox has been criticized heavily for its lack of exclusives over the years, and this would be a great game to have in their lineup. And my goodness, the demand for it is there in spades. Just look at how people reacted when Banjo-Kazooie was announced as a playable character in Smash. <laughs> That's just as a playable character. Now imagine how people would react if an entire game was announced. I just don't get it. I want this game so much, and I'll be expecting to receive messages from all of you personally congratulating me if the game ever gets announced. Alright, but that does it for my five games. Of course, you all have your games that you've been hoping for as well. I'd love to hear which games you all pick, as well as what you think of the games that I picked. So with that, leave your comments down below, and I will see ya in the next video. He's the red trooper, yeah. And he's talking, talking about video games. He's